let's go ahead and I tell you what, we'll start by, I'm going to pop up here the depth chart, the uh, depth chart, of course, from rlads.com. You can check out rlads.com. We'll leave a description uh, of, uh, of this link here to the depth chart in the Prime Sports Network channel, of course, which is you're watching right now. Okay, so let's go over it. And, I, and, and let's start a quarterback. So Trevor Lawrence, um, did he – digress was it injury related uh what 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 it wasn't uh it wasn't a productive season after the season before no it's uh i may be in the minority around here i think most of it's injury related i'll give you this stat that i've been using a lot for 16 games between five the last five games of 2022 and the last and the first 11 of this year he had uh 29 touchdowns, nine interceptions, and the Jags were 13 and three in those games. Uh, that ended with the Cincinnati game when he he had a high ankle sprain. He then left three of the last five games with injuries. The team went one and five uh, during this late season stretch, and he was seven of seven interceptions and touchdowns. Um, he's not a he's not a finished product even when he's playing well yet. Yeah, but to me. You know, it, it's always hard to tell with injuries when a guy's playing through them how much they're affecting it. I can't help looking at those numbers and those results and thinking that injuries had a lot to do with how he played the last six games. Absolutely. Um, and he was in, in a top 10 MVP candidate. This team was fighting for the number one seed. And then in the last six games, he leaves three with injuries, misses another played a week or played a week after a concussion. Um, I've got to think that he was being affected by it. So that doesn't mean that there's not a long way to go for this kid, because even when he's healthy, he fumbles too much when hit and throws a few too many interceptions that you don't like, but the interceptions this year really spiked after the injury. So uh, he was also playing those last five or six games without Christian Kirk who is his most reliable, trusted receiver that he doesn't have to think about where Christian's going to be. I think those two factors, uh, I, I may have egg on my face after this season. Maybe he comes out and he's a turnover machine. But I think those two factors were major contributors to Trevor Lawrence's str uh, struggles in the last six games. Yeah, I, I, when you're dominating and winning, uh, like say the Chiefs are right now, and the Patriots, of course, have done it. We've seen other uh, sports teams do it in other industries. The fact is, is you have to be relatively healthy at key positions. And when 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 you're when 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 you, when everything's going great, you don't even think about it. But then when the injuries occur, uh, you're like, yeah, man, I, I just wish we were healthy. No matter, it just, it, it's obvious why we're. It's not just the quarterback, like you were saying, we're Kirk yeah. and other things. And, uh, and, and that's what you need. You just got to have injury luck on your side. Um, and I'm sure that was a big deal. Uh, no question about it for Jacksonville last season. So, I mean, on one hand, that's a good thing because it just says if we're healthy, we're going to be better. Um, but the division is definitely getting much tougher now, uh, especially with the emergence of Houston. And you would think Indianapolis, we'll see what they have, what, ha what happens with Richardson next season. Um, and, uh, Tennessee being the wild card. So, um, how did the fans, by the way, as we move on, how did the fans take overall? I'm sure they witnessed it. They, they, some of them had to understand it as well, but how did they take to it? Uh, and, and, and Lawrence down the stretch, how did they take to, how did it take uh, to the, the disappointment of, of, uh, playoffs one year where we're riding high for half a season, everything's great. And then crashing down the stretch last season. Well, the sky's fall. That's how fans take it. I mean, <laughs> that's how they always take it. So, um, <laughs> And, and, and rightly so, you're eight and three and you finish nine and eight. Uh, and I, th I think a big thing is when people see Trevor out there playing, uh, they forget that human beings yep. struggle when they're hurt. Uh, and the argument to that from fans is, well, Mahomes was hurt in the playoffs last year and the Chiefs still won the Super Bowl. Um, and I, I guess to me, Patrick Mahomes is maybe one of the Rushmore guys. Yeah. Uh, newsflash, Trevor's not a Rushmore guy yet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't think that means he sucks. Sure. You know what I mean? I, I think there's a an area between being terrible, which fans tend to think when your team loses like that, 
and being one of the greatest of all time. So uh, I think I think Trevor's okay. I I think he still needs some stuff around him uh, to go well because uh, he was in his third year this year, and all of a sudden he's without a safety blanket. So uh, somewhere in there is is uh, the truth about Trevor. Uh, the good news is we get to see it play out next year. Yeah, I, I, I kind of made the same comment um, covering the Jets. Uh, they were making comparisons to Tom Brady with Aaron Rodgers, and I was going, what are we, what are we talking about here? What are we talking about here? Ha, ha, Tom, Tom Brady? I mean, come on. Stop comparing certain guys to Tom Brady. Stop comparing, say, Trevor Lawrence to Patrick Mahomes. It, they're not comparable. You just right. can't do that. It's, it's not fair to them. And the other thing, too, is this is why we hear – uh, coaches talk about it, about, yeah, they, they love it when players play through pain, but it's important that if a player is going to pay through pain, that they have to be effective. Otherwise, maybe you shouldn't play. Right. So, yeah. So. And they were in a situation last year. Uh, I know Doug, you know, made the decision that when Trevor was available, play him starting quarterback, you have to do it. And, uh, you know, it, it's a week to week thing. And w- when you've got your quarterback and your leader uh, and he wants to be on the field, then you go with it. So yeah. uh, that's what they did. Would he have that to do over again? I have no idea. Uh, with um, Bethard as the backup, uh, do you think, and after what they went through uh, this past season with the injury uh, to Lawrence and him forcing himself into the lineup, uh, is there any idea of bringing in someone else or are they pretty happy with Bethard as a number two? Yeah, they like Bethard. He, he won the only game he started last year. Uh, you know, I, I think their approach is uh, if a backup can get you a five, a 500 record when he's playing, uh, you know, I've always thought of a backup as a guy who uh, if he misses a month and you're eight and three, and you can be 10 and five after he plays for a month, then you take that. So I I think he can get you by. Uh, They probably couldn't beat the Chiefs with Bethard playing, but they would probably beat the Panthers, which they did last year at the end of the season. So I think that's what he gives you. I don't sense any any move to change. Okay, running back. Uh, We touched up on this on the other uh, segment. So Etienne, only 3.8 a carry. Bigsby, only 2.6 a carry. Johnson's a free agent. Fact is, is we know they're talented running backs. And and, and Etienne, of course, also very good uh, as a receiver. But the fact is, uh, whether or not you want to point it at the running backs or the offensive line, they have to do a better job of running the football. Yeah, I don't think you pointed at the running backs in this case. I think it's the offensive line. Uh, they were not it, ETN when he had a chance to run ran well, he had 11 uh, touchdowns. I think uh, there were games early in the season where he played very, very well. This team ran for a hundred in seven of the first 10 games. And then after that, uh, you, you know, the interior of the line just did not create enough space. So uh, I think when I mentioned running backs earlier needing to be, better it was more uh they need more out of bigsby they need him to show that he's ready to take a little bit of the load off okay Uh, if they run i mean if they get run blocking uh better if they get to the middle of the league or whatever i think travis is back over uh i think he's back over four yards of carry he's not a problem to me all right uh, do you think that that's just going to be so Johnson is that, yeah, maybe we'll resign him on the cheap. Or do you think they'll uh, look elsewhere? But I think he'd be fine with uh, having him back. Um, I think he's one of those guys that would probably be a re-signing either before the, uh, you know, a low level re-signing yep. right before I, UFA, or if, if he wants to test the market and doesn't really get anything, he'd be happy to have him back. He, he he functioned very well when he when given the opportunity, he made some plays. Uh, so I, I wouldn't surprise me if he's back. Uh, I don't know that they feel like they need to invest draft equity uh, yeah. to get that spot. Okay, uh, tight end Evan Ingram seemed to uh, really uh, take another step. Uh, I actually have him on my dynasty team. Uh, started our league last year and I 
he's my number one guy. So I was very, I mean, the tight, the touchdowns didn't come, but everything else seemed to do pretty well. Um, and right now with strange as a second round draft pick last year, they're set, right? Yeah, I would think they're, uh, they also have Luke Farrell, who, uh, I think one more year left on his deal, uh, cause he was a drafted rookie. Um, a strange, good blocker played very well. I thought early in, in the role they asked him to do, uh, had a, a strange injury in practice, uh, that, kept him out for a little while mid season. Never really felt like he got back. Um, okay. I, I'd be surprised if they make much noise. You might see a uh, low level guy. It, if they decide to carry four, if they love somebody in the draft, they can't pass up. Uh, don't feel like it's something they're trying to go out and get. Okay. And by the way, how, how are they with Ingram's contract? How Ingram's contract? Where is he right now? Well, he, he, he resigned last year. Signed a three-year deal, I believe it was. Uh, almost has to be here through 2024, uh, and he's okay. such a good player for him. Uh, my guess is, as long as he has seasons like he has the last two years, I mean, he had astronomical number of catches last year. Yeah, uh, I don't think they love him having that many catches uh, because he had 50 after Kurt got hurt in six games. So they really overemphasized Ingram because they had to. I think they would rather have that be a touch more balanced. Uh, but they love him. He, he's a key part of what they do. Trevor trusts him. Um, I, I'd be surprised if he's not here at least two years, which at, at his age and his career, that's a long time. By the way, um, how, how is the team right now uh, as far as their salary cap? Uh, everybody knows how to get under it. But are they in a decent enough position league average wise? And are there any current players under contract that you think we have to keep an eye on for either restructures or potential cap casualties? Yeah, well, I think there'll be a lot of restructuring because that's, that's just kind of how it is every year. Um, in terms of restructuring, I mean, added some voided years. They did a lot of that last year. Hard to really predict who that would be with. Okay. Um, but I would, you know, as I said earlier, I think Brandon Sheriff, uh, right guard, I'd be surprised if he's back. Um, Rayshon Jenkins, safety, be a little surprised if he's back. Not that they weren't good players, but yeah. when they were signed in 21 and 20, respectively, they were signed with the idea that probably wouldn't play out their contracts just because that's that, how league works. Uh, what I don't know, Foley Fadakasi, defensive tackle, uh, hard to. S- I don't know if he'd be back. There's room in the contract to release him. Uh, Zay Jones, sort of the same way. I'd be surprised if Zay's gone. Not shocked if uh, if uh, Foley's gone. Uh, so players along those lines would be the ones that fall in. Cam Robinson's another one that's he's got a 16 or uh, I forget his cap figures, maybe over 20 uh, left tackle. Uh, he's really good player. Uh, do they feel like they've got enough behind him that they have to re- release him to get down to the cap? Uh, he's one to watch as well. Uh, kind of 50, 50 on that right now, whether he's back or not. All right, let's pick it back up then at wide receiver speaking of free agents. So Ridley big year, uh, for the team, especially when Kirk went down. So he really had, he was the main man, uh, all season, um, is he and, and and you look at it, so it's Ridley on offense and you got Josh Allen on defense. Those are the two main guys, yes. Yeah. So do you think both will be back? Will one be tagged? Yeah, I mean, I, I think one of them will be tagged. Uh, it sort of depends on uh, Josh Allen's definitely back. I mean, he's either going to be a franchise tag player or he's going to sign to a long term deal, well deserved. Uh, what we don't know right now is whether or not it, if they can get the long term deal done with Josh. Then, then they have the tag uh, available to use on Calvin. Um, I know they like to have Calvin back. I'm not sure what that looks like in terms of, uh, I know he'd like to be back. Is his agent hearing that he's going to have a big number on free agency, how that plays out? Uh, we're sort of waiting to get a better idea of that, frankly. There's some ways that each player could go. Okay, then uh, as far as the rest of the receiving unit, 
Um, how is the depth? I mean, Parker Washington was the rookie draft pick, but there's uh, th- those five guys on the bench. I mean, there's, uh, yeah. you know, well, Agnew. I mean, he, he definitely uh, he's a veteran and, and is the top kick returner. But the other four guys are, you know, younger guys trying to prove themselves. Did anybody potentially prove themselves? And how does the depth look? Uh, your guess is as good as mine. They didn't play really enough to know. Uh, I would break down the receivers like this. Zay Jones hurt most of the year last year. Big trust with Trevor when he plays. It, if he's back, he's very important. Christian Kirk, uh, Zay Jones, and Calvin Ridley, uh, frontline guys, probably all 1A type receivers. If you follow me, I don't know that there's an alpha in that group, but a good group when healthy and, and when playing right. Beyond that, Parker Washington uh, played some after Christian got hurt. Uh, Hard to know what he is. He, he He's capable, uh, but didn't produce all that much at the end of last year. Not that unusual for a rookie. Yep. Elijah Cooks uh, played. I think he had one catch. Looked very good in camp last year. Uh, hard to tell what a guy who looks good in camp is going to be in the games until he gets more time than he had. Beyond that, Tim Jones is uh, a special teams guy uh, more than he is a receiver probably. Uh, Jamal Agnew, great returner. Uh, remains to be seen whether he'll be brought back because of his cap number. Do you, uh, and, and again, a lot's going to depend on Ridley and Jones, obviously, but um, let's just say both of those guys are back and everybody could return. Do you still see them maybe trying to improve the depth? I think the only way they would do that, maybe I, it would be in the draft if they did it, I think. And uh, it would probably be a situation where, there was a guy sitting in the second, third, or fourth round that they had a first round grade on kind of guy he, okay. you know, who was just too good to pass up. Uh, any team would love to do this. They would really love to do it. Develop a young receiver that could replace one of these high priced free agents at some point. They haven't done that in a long time. They wouldn't ignore that. Uh, but how big of a need it is, wish I had a better answer until we know if they bring back Zay and Calvin hard to tell how big of a need it's going to be. If one of those guys is gone, I could see him taking it on day two you know, or, or even day one. If the guy's right, you know, it'd yeah. be that big of a deal. If they're both back hard to see investing day one and early day two equity. Yeah. This is going to be a really good deep draft yeah. early for wide receivers. I'm sure you've uh, uh, looked into that already. So, um, but they all are these days, right? <laughs> And it's not easy, though, to find the right guy, though. That's the trick. That's exactly right. Yeah, they all look good. But sometimes you draft these guys in the first, second round, you're like, man, how come come my guy didn't do what that guy did? So it's just the way it is. All right, Uh, offensive line. And uh, this is very important. And we talked about this as the number one need, the interior of the offensive line on the r Lads (coughs) segment. So – Ezra Cleveland, uh, what do you think they're going to do there? Do you think they uh, do they want to resign him? Yeah, I think they'd like to have him back. Um, some of that's going to depend. Obviously, uh, they're not going to tag him. Obviously, so uh, how much can you get it done before they really like him? Uh, does Ezra want to go play tackle somewhere? They see him as a guard, probably. Uh, so. I think they'd like to have him back as, as their left guard. Uh, how that plays out in terms of what they want to pay to have him back as the left guard, I think that's what's – I think those are the conversations that are happening now. All right, and as you mentioned, uh, Scherf looks like he is not going to return. So that opens a spot. And then Fortner, yeah. uh, who's been uh, there a couple of years, I know he's young, but is it time to bring someone else in to compete with him? Well, that's what – that's sort of the million dollar question of the off season. Uh, most observers think so. Team supported him heavily last year. Whenever asked, uh, I would think they need something more stout in the middle. Is that Fortner getting more stout in the off season? I don't know if that's possible. I mean, I, maybe it is, maybe not. I did. I just don't know how they'll play that. They need to be better on the interior. They need to be better at center. Um, I would think they'll do something in free agency for competition or something in the draft for competition, uh, but they have not indicated anything, anything like that publicly yet. Uh, really, the offensive line as a whole, to be honest, 
is so hard to figure out what it's going to look like next year because I don't think they know yet. There's a chance that Anton Harrison, who was outstanding on the right side, if Cam Robinson's not back, he could conceivably go play the left. They like him as a left tackle over the long term. If Cam's back, Cam probably plays left and Anton's on the right with Walker Little as your swing. So there's so many, and uh, Walker Little can play guard and tackle. So I would love to be able to sit here and tell the viewers right now, A, B, C, D, and a couple of if-then scenarios. Um, however much time we're spending on this podcast today, we could spend the whole thing on offensive line and still not hit the right combination. It's that yeah. Yeah, and they got to fix that. Yeah, it's important. Yeah. It's continuity along the offensive line. That's everything. So, yeah, that's uh, biggest uh, biggest uh, position of uh, f- uh, we have to follow. No question. And then Cam Robinson, like you said, w- we don't know whether or not he's even going to be um, someone that they might have to cut. Yeah, cat- what they've casually. got really is they've got a lot of players who are good. Uh, nobody's really established themselves as great. So you don't quite know what they're going to do at each spot, right? I mean, that kind of yep. – uh, they're all NFL players. They're all good at times. But yet something didn't happen last year with the offensive line that they struggled to run late in the season when it mattered. That caused them – obviously, when you are when you struggle to run, you usually struggle to uh, pass protect too because yes. you're in so many passing situations. Yep. So that sort of led to that. Uh They've got to figure it out. And honestly, those are the storylines that everybody around here is trying to figure out how it's going to look. Uh, Because frankly, we're not sure how it's going to look. They haven't said much about it. And there's so many ways it can go. Okay. Let's scroll on down to defense. And we'll start on the defensive line. And this is where I noticed a little bit of age. You know, Gostas will be 32. Um, Harris uh, will be uh, 31. Uh, you also have uh, a couple of free agents there. Um, you mentioned Fado Kasi could be a cap, cap uh, casualty. So um, it just seems you're talking about the offensive line. Same thing that could be said about the defensive line. They, they need an alpha, don't they? Yeah, pr- probably. I don't know if, if, if they don't get it in the draft, I don't know that they can invest in an alpha in free agency because you invest alpha's free agency, you're spending a lot of money. Yep. Uh, where Robertson Harrison is back for another year. Uh, Devon Hamilton, who, who who had a weird back thing that sort of kept him out the first half of the season, never got back to what he was in, in, in 2022, and that really hurt him. Uh, what they really need is, is uh, for Devon to be the player that they re-signed in the 23 off season, and to have one guy, maybe it's a draft pick, uh, come along and really fortify that area. Because it was not good the second half of last season. The whole defensive – front did not stop the run well enough it's it's very similar to offensive line in the sense that there there are players who have been good at times but there has not been a dominant uh dominant presence so i think they need to improve there how they're going to do it is uh again major storyline uh not sure they're going to tip their hand quite yet uh, did, uh, Lacey, uh, how did he look in limited snaps? Good. I mean, he, uh, rookie defensive tackle. Who's not a pass rusher. You don't notice him that much, uh, but played, you did not hear that he was hurting anything, uh, which for a fourth round guy, first year rotational guy, that's sort of what you want. I think they think he can be a, a, a good rotational defensive interior player, for a long time in this league. Don't think he's a star, but he's uh, he's going to play a long time in the NFL. He's that guy. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the uh, edge rushers. So we've already uh, brought up Allen. So he'll be around. Um, just a matter of how long yeah. initially. Uh, Smoot and Chase on a free agents. Do you think they will let them go? Probably. Um, I know they would like Dwan Smoot to be around. He, uh, Hard to know now with Dwan uh, sort of what he is, meaning he had an Achilles injury in December of 2022, c- came back, and as as you know, coming back on an Achilles the next year, you can be back, but you're not quite back, right? So that sort of happened with him. Uh, I don't know how they feel about his ability to improve off of that. Great guy. He's been a long-term player for this team and productive. Wasn't very productive last year. So 
it, is it the end of the road for him in Jacksonville? I, I hope not. Uh, might be, but they've got to get more production uh, from their uh, or more reliability from their backup edge guys. Their frontline edge guys, uh, you'll probably don't anticipate your question. Josh Allen and Trayvon Walker were outstanding last year. We've talked about Josh. Uh, Trayvon Walker on the other edge, he had 10 sacks. Uh, he was he was unbelievably good against the run. Uh, a lot of people think with Trayvon, that because he hasn't had 15 sacks yet, that he's not worthy of the number one overall pick. I feel the opposite. This kid is, is outstanding. Uh, he was a force against the run, improved dramatically as a pass rusher last year. I think his best days still remain ahead of him. Uh, but he and Josh combined for 27 and a half sacks last year. Josh had 17 and a half. Uh, that led the league in terms of edge rushing tandems. Uh, if you're Ryan Nielsen, who's coming in as a defensive coordinator, uh, you make sure that those guys are back. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> because, because that's your strength. And there's only so it's it, you know, I guess first question is Abdullah. So you're only a fifth round draft pick, but is uh, is it possible that like, let's say they do resign Smoot? Is it possible they say okay, Abdullah could still be our our young, hopefully up and coming number three, or do you think they're going to go out there and try to get another edge rusher through the draft? Yeah, I, I, hard to say. He played maybe one or two games last year. He he, he was sort of your season long and active. Uh, you know. I know they'd like him to be sort yeah. of that third guy. That's what they drafted him hoping. Uh, did he show enough last year for them to do that? I don't see how that's possible. So I, I, I would think if, if you see something out there that you can afford, I would, I would think you'd go get it and try to have a little more at that spot. Uh, Abdullah, I don't know how to grade what I didn't see. If yeah. that makes any sense. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Hard to know with that one. I uh, wish I had a better answer because I think they wish he'd been on the field more. All right. Well, I guess we will find out how they yeah. feel about that uh, this offseason. Okay. Uh, inside linebacker. And boy, uh, doesn't I can't imagine there are many inside linebacker duos in the 3 4 that played as well as these two. Not surprising to see Devin Lloyd uh, blossom last year. Um, and, uh, yeah, this is, uh, looks like a good combo to me now, Miller, uh, what happened to him and Muma, uh, we were wondering why they went with Muma in the same year that they drafted, uh, Lloyd. Uh, and I'm sure our fans are probably wondering that even more so since we haven't really seen the production out of Muma yet. So, um, let's talk about that position. Yeah. Probably need to back up a little bit. Uh, Foya Luicon has been everything they wanted him to be very productive, uh, very reliable, great leader. Uh, Devin Lloyd, uh, you say Blossom, he was good early last year and really struggled late. Um, okay. So they need uh, one of the charges for Ryan Nielsen, new defensive coordinator, is to figure out how to have Devin Lloyd play as well as as you maybe thought he did because okay. he, he compiles numbers. Uh, there, there were times last year, jumped out of gaps, um, yeah, I'm not trying to pile on the kid, but sure. uh, first round pick uh, needs to be a core guy. Needs to be a guy that is the reason you're good. Trayvon Walker lived up to that last year. Uh, Devin Lloyd, by the end of the season, uh, I think it's only fair to say that it was not quite there. So uh, they need him to be the uh, 27th overall pick that they drafted in 2022. Uh, Muma hasn't played. But he was really drafted as, uh, you know, not just special teams. I'm not, I'm not going to try to frame it that way. But as a guy who, uh, if either Muma, I mean, if either Lloyd or Aluakon aren't in there, very reliable to come in. Uh, they've both been on the field the whole time. So it hadn't been a whole lot of uh, space for him to play. He was a, I would say luxury pick, but he was a guy that they thought his skill level merited taking him when they took him uh, best player available type of thing. So hard to know what he is. Cause he hasn't played a whole lot of snaps on defense. I, I still think he's going to be okay. Uh, hasn't had a chance to prove me right on that. 
And uh, Miller was out the season. I think it was I, – if memory serves, it was a leg. He, he was out the entire season with basically a pre-existing injury. Uh, so the hope is that he's coming in and that he's your third or fourth guy and that he's what uh, – he's that third or fourth linebacker that everybody teams yep. – every team needs is playing special teams, is available. Uh, they love him as a kid. Uh, it's it's hard to know what he is in, as an NFL player because his his time has been so limited. Yeah, uh, on paper it certainly looks like a promising unit. Now they just have to uh, see that Devin Lloyd uh, continues to uh, make that next step. Yeah, they need and, to be on the field what they look like on paper because we really haven't seen it yet. Yep, and that is the position that I mean I deal with it all the time as a Jet fan with CJ Mosley. I mean I hear I watch the game, I watch every play, and I hear people on the outside talking about how great he is, and I try to tell people, well. All right, he's a leader, you know, it's important and he makes tackles, but you pay the guy that much money, you want more than that. Yeah. And you know, if you don't watch them every every play and you don't understand that, you just don't see it. And and that's that's why it's important. That's why I want to do these interviews, obviously, uh, to educate everybody out there that is not necessarily a Jaguar fan, not just Jack fans. Okay, so let's go to the defensive backfield. And we obviously talked a little bit about that uh before on the other segment. You talked about this being potentially the third offseason need. So let's start with the the cornerbacks um, uh, because uh, Campbell, uh, it's about staying healthy with him, correct? Yeah, I mean, uh, coming into the last season, you looked at Tyson like he'd be a second contract guy uh, and was right on the cusp being a Pro Bowl kind of guy. Injured his hamstring, I want to say week six, uh, and was never really right again. You know, which is not necessarily an indictment on him. A lot of corners and receivers, when they injure a hamstring in week six, are never right again that season. Yeah. It's a hard position to play through that injury with. Uh, gutted it out. Played, I think, six of the last 12 games, or whatever that number is, six of the last 11. Uh, was never quite what you thought he was going to be. So it really has to show this year, at that position, you have to show you can come back and be healthy and play the whole season and play at a high level. If he does, they probably re-sign him and he's a strength. If not, I'm not sure what happens. Uh, Darius Williams is a older player than, than Tyson. Played very well at times last year. He was the kind of guy, he'd give up some yards, but then he'd make plays. He knocked down a lot of balls. He forced a lot of punts. He, 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 had, he had interceptions. He has a good knack for the ball. Uh, but realistically, are you going to re-sign two corners to, to long-term deals uh, in this era, probably not. So I would think that one or both of them won't be here in 25. Okay. Hard to tell which guy that'll be yet. Maybe the franchise tags available, which always makes sense at that spot. Who knows? I don't know the dynamics of that yet, but the, uh, their contract situation is really why I think uh, first round, second round corner. Also Ryan Nielsen likes to play a specific kind of defense man uh, with a lot of press. He may want guys who fit that a little more, and you may start looking ahead to that in the draft. And Herndon uh, seemed to do a pretty good job last year. He's a free agent. Are they just going to slip Antonio Johnson now into that role full time? Well, no, I don't think uh, Antonio Johnson would not be your nickel corner, uh, more of a safety. I think Antonio Johnson will probably replace Rayshon Jenkins in the lineup. Uh, and you're. Nickel corner would theoretically be if you draft a guy on day one or day two, you slide him in nickel and then have him slide outside the following year. But uh, Trey Hearn has been fine. Uh, he has become in the last two or three years a one-year contract veteran guy that you trust, uh, not a superstar, but you like having guys like him on your team. Would you, would you rather have him be the fourth corner as opposed to the third? Maybe. Uh, but he's probably at that level, very good NFL player. And if he's not with the Jaguars, I expect him to still play in this league for a long time. And uh, Cisco, the other safety, and then Wingard, who uh, does a good job on special teams and also seems to do a pretty good job uh, stepping in from time to time. Yeah. They're, they're solid there then with those two guys. Yeah, Cisco, uh, very good early last year, much like a lot of the defense. Uh, his defense was really good for about eight or nine games. And then it seemed like it just sort of wore out. Uh, and 
jumping out of gaps in the run, uh, some mistakes in the defensive backfield. Cisco is a ball hawk. He he can create turnovers. Uh, probably needs to. I think there's a level with him that he's capable of reaching that he can reach that he hasn't quite gotten there yet. And, okay. and I'm not yeah. trying to say he's a bad player because sure. he's not. Uh, but he has. He has some superstar potential in yeah. him, it looks like, because there's times where he'll make interceptions where you're like, well, that changed the game. Uh, I think he would like to be a little more of that consistently than he has been, uh, if I'm saying that right. I'm, sure. Again, I'm not saying that he'll start and he makes you better. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a little bit more there that he'd like to tap into. I agree. Yeah, there's another gear there that he definitely he's got uh, potential like Pro Bowl, uh, all pro ability. So, um, yeah, like, I mean, uh, case in point with that, uh, not to get too into the weeds, but uh, last game of the season, they needed a huge play at the end of the game. He had an unbelievably instinctive interception against the Titans that uh, allowed the Jaguars to get back into a game where they had sort of uh, let it get away. And it was a momentum changer. It was a great instinctive play. Uh, and he'll do that once every four or five games. Um, so it's hard to get interceptions like that because it's, sure. you know, the league is set up to make you not get interceptions like that. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, he's capable of that sort of thing. So he's always a storyline as long as he's around. And wrapping up in special teams. So we talked about Agnew. He's a free agent. Uh, McManus, the place kicker, is a free agent. So uh, what do you think is going to happen on special teams? Yeah, they signed Riley Patterson to a futures deal. Uh, I, I expect if if McManus is back, I expect there to be competition. Uh, tough to get a, a read on that. He had a stretch midway through last season where he struggled, but he struggled with really long kicks, like 51 and 52 yarders. So was it struggling? Was it, was it just asking a lot? Uh, it wasn't that he was unreliable. Uh, but would they like to draft a kicker uh, to sort of nail down a position? Some teams like to do that if they've been uncertain, which this team's sort of gone through kickers the last three or four years. Would they try to just nail it down and get a 10-year guy? Uh, you could see that. Um, McManus will be interesting in the next couple of years. I mean, uh, the next couple of weeks. All right. And do you think Agnew will be back? Uh, I would guess not. Again, not because he's not good, but with their cap, uh, do you keep paying a returner uh, who had more big plays in 22 than he did 23? He also missed, uh, I think it was uh, four or five games with injuries. So, you know, it's not they don't like him. It's not that he's not good, uh, but where are you going to allocate your resources? Uh, that might be a little bit with Jamal. Uh, final thing before we move on, before we move on from special teams, uh, Logan Cook. Uh, this team wouldn't trade Logan Cook for any punter in the league. They think he's as good as anybody, and, and he's outstanding. Huge flip the field guy. Uh, it's sort of circumstantial that he hasn't been in the Pro Bowl yet. He hasn't had quite had that number. He's a Pro Bowl kicker, even though he hasn't made it. And uh, their long snapper, Ross Matisic, uh, and, and I, always, I always get his name wrong, uh, he's the best in the league if you care about long snappers. Some people don't. Uh, Ross does. <laughs> and uh, who have, and and uh, who's the special teams coach? Um, Heath Farewell. He fr- uh, I was drawing a blank. Hadn't thought of him in a couple weeks. Uh, yeah. He cares. Yeah. He, he cares because <laughs> we're clean. Honestly, kidding aside, uh, Ross had eight special teams tackles last year, forced to fumble. He's, he's, he's unusually good at that position. All right. So that's going to wrap it up. Great job as always, John. I appreciate it. And I uh, just want to remind everybody. So you have, uh, you still have the uh, podcast that you're doing. Uh, well, uh, yeah, we do the huddle up podcast uh, for Jaguars.com. Uh, me, Bucky Brooks and JP Shadrick and uh, Bucky's obviously uh, gives us a national feel in that. And he's tied in with the Jags. So that's always it's always fun. Runs Wednesdays. Wednesdays? And, yes, sir. And what's it called? Uh, the Huddle Up Podcast. Okay. We're real creative. Yeah. What, what, did it used to be called the Ozone Podcast? Uh, well, I do my own Ozone Podcast. Oh, you do? Uh, 
where I interview players. Uh, oh, and, that's and, on the web. That's on the Jags.com site. Yeah, it's on the site. It's it's a little more uh, trying to get inside the players' heads a little bit. Uh, we'll have national media on as well at uh, various times during the season. That's Thanks. a little bit more of an interview, whereas the huddle up is more uh, Bucky and I talking ball, and he knows more about it than I do. So it's always insightful. Both those things are good, though. Yeah, I'll uh, leave a link in the description for sure uh, in this interview. And, John, I look forward to talking to you at some time right around the draft, uh, maybe when it's over. Uh, a lot to digest. And uh, again, thanks a lot for your time. No problem, buddy. Always enjoy it.